primary matters for first time in decades New York CNN For the first time in decades, New Yorkers are poised to play a crucial role in shaping the presidential nomination process. As Empire State voters head to the polls Tuesday, the stakes are highest for frontrunners Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, who are expected to emerge victorious here. And as wildly different as their candidacies are, Trump and Clinton find themselves in a similar position, hoping to gain validation and momentum after a string of disappointments. Trump badly needs a sweeping win in New York if Ted Cruz peels away a significant number of delegates. It will become that much more difficult for Trump to outright clinch the GOP nomination ahead of this summer's Republican convention. For Clinton, the challenge has more to do with optics. Putting an end to Sanders' winning streak in the West and undermining his narrative that he's the Democrat with the most momentum. 2016 delegate tracker both candidates spent Tuesday morning taking care of their first order of business voting. Trump visited his polling station, the Central Synagogue three blocks east of Trump Tower, where he cast a ballot for himself for the first time. It's a proud moment, it's a great moment, and who would have thought? It's just an honor, he told reporters. Clinton was accompanied by her husband, Bill, in her morning stop at the Douglas G. Graflin Elementary School in Chappaqua. Campaigning in the state has been a joy, Clinton said, before urging fellow New Yorkers to vote. I had a great time going around the city in the last couple days, just seeing a lot of old friends. Meeting new people, she said. As the presidential candidates and national media have descended on New York, local political figures in both parties are relishing the state's rare moment in the spotlight of a presidential election. It's been an unusual circumstance where New York is one of the deciding factors in the Democratic race, so that's exciting, said Democratic Queensboro President Melinda Katz. New Hampshire moment New York State Republican Party Chairman Ed Cox referred to the contests here as his state's New Hampshire moment, a reference to the New England state's outsized role in the presidential primary. This is what the New York State Party needs. We need this kind of excitement, Cox said. We are indeed having our decisive moment in selecting the next president of the United States. There are 95 delegates up for grabs in New York in the Republican race. At this stage in the campaign, every single one of those delegates matters. Over the past few weeks, Trump has come face to face with the Cruz campaign's strong command of the complicated delegate allocation rules. The GOP frontrunner has expressed frustration as he's watched Cruz walk away with victories and grow his delegate pile, a sentiment that boiled over after the Texas senator swept the Colorado Republican convention earlier this month. Trump is becoming increasingly vocal in his criticism of the Republican National Committee and the party's nominating process, calling the latter crooked and corrupt. There have also been changes within the Trump campaign's operations. Perhaps most notably, Trump announced the hire of veteran Republican strategist Paul Manafort to oversee the campaign's delegate-gathering efforts. Meanwhile, Trump's national field director, Stuart Jolly, resigned Monday amid a staff shakeup that put Scott Walker's former campaign manager in charge of the campaign's ground operations. Democrats on the Democratic side. 247 delegates are up for grabs on Tuesday. Although Clinton continues to have a sizable lead in delegates, the New York race comes after Sanders has won eight of the last nine Democratic contests, a reality that the Vermont senator has repeatedly touted on the campaign trail. I think the Clinton campaign and the secretary are getting a little bit nervous. Sanders told CNN after last week's particularly combative Democratic debate in Brooklyn. Sanders has drawn tens of thousands of supporters to his rallies in New York City over the last week, but on Election Day, he signaled that he is turning his focus to the post-New York contests by flying out to campaign in Erie, Pennsylvania. You know what? I think we're going to win Pennsylvania, he said at an afternoon rally there. Cruz and Kasich also spent the day out of New York.
Tuesday's contests are particularly significant for three of the candidates who have roots in New York. Trump is a Queens native and Manhattanite whose famous last name is featured on real estate properties around the city. For Clinton, the current juncture in the race marks something of a homecoming. She was a New York senator for eight years, owns a home in Chappaqua and her campaign headquarters is in Brooklyn. And while Sanders has represented Vermont on Capitol Hill for decades, he was born and raised in Brooklyn and has spoken fondly about his upbringing in the borough. Clinton in particular appeared to delight in campaigning in the five boroughs in recent days. She kept a packed schedule that included riding the subway, drinking bubble tea and sampling dumplings in Brooklyn, all part of an effort to tour the city and mingle with its residents in relatively casual settings. But even as she appeared especially energized here, Clinton took a measured tone during a campaign stop in Flushing, Queens, on Monday. She told reporters that she would not take anybody or any place for granted. I never count any chickens before they hatch. We are going to work hard, she said. We are going to do everything we can between now and 9 p.m. Tomorrow night when polls close here in New York. In contrast, Trump has focused most of his campaign efforts in upstate New York. Speaking at a rally in Buffalo Monday night, Trump boasted about New York values and called the state a symbol of American strength in the world. We're going to show Ted Cruz. Who hates New York? Trump said. No New Yorker can vote for Ted Cruz.